In this episode of A Cult of Personality Podcast, an interview with artist Oriel Defenestrate Bascule to discuss his alchemical art and more. I'm your host, Greg Kaminsky, and you can find A Cult of Personality Podcast at occultofpersonality.net and on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher Radio, and all the best podcast apps. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook to get updates on new episodes and more. A Cult of Personality podcast is made possible by you, the listeners, and by the subscribers to the Occult of Personality membership section. And I'd like to remind you that although you're able to listen to this podcast at no charge, the costs for me to bring it to you are significant. If you're willing, consider supporting a cult of personality by joining the membership section or donating via the donate button on the occult of personality.net website or via Patreon at patreon.com slash occult of personality. If you find these interviews interesting, informative, inspiring, and thought-provoking, please commit to helping me continue bringing you this free podcast. And if you're already supporting the show or have done so in the past, my heartfelt thanks, and I salute you. A Cult of Personality podcast is also sponsored by Miskatonic Books an online store that focuses on the esoteric, occult, ceremonial magic, Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism, witchcraft, the Golden Dawn, as well as dark fantasy, classic horror, and supernatural fiction. They carry books by all your favorite esoteric publishers as well. Just visit MiskatonicBooks.com. Temple of Thelema is a true outer order of the greater mysteries, providing ceremonial initiation, structured training, and regular group work, all in conformity with the principles of the Book of the Law. An investment of time, effort, and commitment is expected from each member. Each is expected to aspire fervently to the great work, to dare, with courage undaunted, to perfect that work and ever to apply his or her best effort to effect harmony within the order and within the world in general. Founded in service to the AA, College of Thelema seeks to guide the student to an understanding of the law of Thelema. Most especially, this means a deeper understanding of oneself and of one's true will. A combination of instruction techniques is employed, including seminars, written texts, and individual work. For over 40 years, College of Thelema has published journals in the Continuum and Black Pearl, as well as several books on occult subjects maintaining high standards in Thelemic education. Visit Temple of Thelema at www.thelema.org. In episode number 166, an interview with acclaimed artist, performer, and magician Oriel Defenestrate Bascule to discuss his Taylor Quadrivium art book series, the fourth and final installment of which is entitled Distillatio and was recently published by Folger. Oriel is intensely creative and deeply versed in esoteric symbolism, making magic through art and performance. His very presence alters the atmosphere in a room, and it's clear that his artwork is integral to his very being 
as well as a continuation of an interaction that artists, gods, and goddesses have been having for millennia. Oriel de Fenestre Bascule is a prolific visual and sonic artist. Oriel finds drawing, painting, sculpture, theater, photography, animation, verse, video, violin, and voice effective ways of earthing magical currents. Distillatio is the final volume in Oriel's fourfold alchemic book web, The Tela Quadrivium. For eight years, Oriel worked only in black and white with touches of gold and silver for the previous volumes in the series. But in the last few years, he has been exploring the alchemy of color in diverse media for this culminating volume. Each volume of the Tela Quadrivium series connects into a multi-directional and spiraling narrative of images, symbols, and text to form a greater whole which has now been distilled into completion. As the culminating volume of the Tela Quadrivium Distillatio provides the reader with the final pieces in an intricate esoteric puzzle, bringing together the book web entire. Oriel also talks about alchemical chess, as well as his upcoming show at Catland in Brooklyn, New York, on Friday, June 24th. You can find links to Oriel's online gallery, his books and artwork, and his Catland event and more in the podcast show notes. Now, we did have some technical difficulties in recording this interview, and I hope you'll bear with us because the sound quality is uh, certainly less than ideal, but uh, the content more than makes up for it. Oriel, it's a pleasure to speak with you once again. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Thank you for having me back again. Hopefully it'll be a um, clearer interview than the last one. Um, we covered some good stuff, but it ended up being a bit of a fuzzy recording, so um, that's a minute to go, and that was quite a while ago now, so um, I have some new things to say by now. <laughs> definitely, definitely, and I would urge people to try to check out that interview um, as well, if they can. Um, but in, uh, since we last spoke, your Taylor Quadri- Quadrivium has uh, been fully published, and the presentation I saw of it was absolutely magnificent. I'm just wondering if you could talk a bit about that. Yeah, it's an interesting cycle, because when we last spoke here, uh, I was ju- I just, I think the first book, King Chunkyo, had just published. And um, last year, the last of the four uh, interconnected books in the Telequidivium came out. Um, so it's the completion of a nine-year project, so it's interesting to come back around to um, talking about this completion and, and also um, what new creations are springing from the completion of that cycle. Um, the Telequidivium is a... It's a, I call it a book web because it's four four books, each related to a different alchemical phase, um, uh, divided with the uh, the basic uh, colors of red, black, white, and gold. Um, and they each uh, each can be read and apprehended individually, but also when they're put together, um, laid out in mandala, then they can be read. Uh, around in a spiral, uh, sort of cycling through the pages of each book and then and returning to the first book, turning the pages of each and going around again. So a continuous spiral, uh, emphasizing the cyclicity of the alchemical process. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's complete in one way and yet it's never complete because it continues to spiral on and um, on a personal level it seems together in a way too because although I finished creating the actual books um, all the things that I seeded with them uh, um, branching out and uh, seeding other creative ventures in all sorts of different directions and then all sorts of different media as well 
I can only imagine. Um, now, I, I got to see your presentation of the cycle, the four books together, and how it functions, at least some of it, not, not fully, I don't think. But it was really amazing. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the idea to do that, because... I think I mentioned it at the time, like I, I've never seen anything like this where you have four books, each unique in and of themselves, but when combined, fit together and form this sort of sp like continually spiraling uh, cycle that is just really unique. Uh, how did I come up with the idea? Well, <laughs> I can't entirely sure now. <laughs> I can't remember the details of how it evolved, but I remember I gave a lot of thought to um, what was unique um, about the book as a specific medium of presenting art, how it, uh, how it differentiates from a website or an exhibition or other ways of presenting art. Um, with its special sort of magical properties. That was mostly the inspiration for the first book, though, um, because what I came up with was the relationship between the pages, and the turning of the pages seemed something unique to the magical book that um, was different from a website or a gallery exhibition or other ways of presenting things. So I really got into that connection with the first book where it's the um, pairs of lovers on opposite pages who were... Um, aligned in such a way that with the turning of the pages uh, they would be united. And that in itself kind of spawned um, the next book. The readers of that first book uh, helped birth the deities in the second book because on the corresponding pages of the gold book are the um, children from the unions in the first book and also the um, hermaphrodite created from their union into a singular form. Um, yeah, I was really getting to alchemy at the time I conceived the, um, the book work as well, so the four magic colors of alchemy seemed a good way to organize them um, and to create a kind of alchemical crossroads by doing. Yeah, I would say it was highly successful. Um, I mean, the books are beautiful, and the artwork is breathtaking. And to me, the the inventiveness of the way you put it together is just masterful. Um, I don't know what more I could really say about it other than people really need to check it out. Um, I know many people really, really love your work. So I don't think it would be a stretch to try to convince anyone, but, you know, if you need convincing, you know, let this be it, you know, go, <laughs> go check this out. It's amazing. Amazing. What you've done, um, I think in a, in a lot of ways elevates the, um, the book art in, in, into like a, a form beyond what it might have been previously. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, you, now, as a result of the completion of the cycle, you now you've embarked on a trip to the United States, um, and thankfully you stopped in Salem and uh, you gave us a little taste of your work, um, which would was excellent. Um, I thought you, there was a great turnout for the presentation, and everybody I talked to was really enjoyed it and was very impressed. So, um, I'm curious how it was for you to like present this publicly, um, because I know from my own experience, it's like very different, like presenting.